one minute away from the start of a hydrogen war. Group 1201 North Europe time. A blazing unidentified missile-like object appears on a foreign sky search TV screen. Origin unknown. Countdown on their hunter-type rocket. This rocket is designed to track, find, Destroy. object has been diverted into an orbit by the explosion. It streaks across the northern curve of the Earth at an altitude of only five miles. A wild missile loose on the surface of the Earth burning a track five miles wide below it. It is morning in New York, a busy spring morning. In suburban New York is the Great Havenbrook Atomic Laboratory. Top military research is conducted here. A five billion volt atom smasher is the heart of Havenbrook. <laughs> This is Joe, a solid fuel rocket built to carry a hydrogen warhead, mightiest weapon in the world. Joe has not yet completed. Final detail on the warhead is still to be done. The man responsible for the warhead, David Loring. His assistant, Joan Wood. This is their wedding day. Oh, honey, Joe has almost finished. Wouldn't you rather wait? I'd rather have a wedding than lunch any day. The lunch hour isn't very romantic. David, every time we set a date, a new project comes along. First, there were the nuclear vectors. Then we had to perfect the new metal for the third stage of Joe. Now, hydrogen warhead. You know how important it is? Yes, I know. But so are we. Oh, David. Couldn't we stop thinking about all this for just a little bit? Beats me how a girl so used to facts and her work can't get used to them in a private life. <laughs> Look. 
Look at us. We fall in love over coffee at midnight. We work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. David, I meant it when I said we get married today or not at all. Well, good thing we got machines to do some work around here. <laughs> you got the figures in the warhead ready yet, David? They sure are. Look, kids, I hate to do this, but I, I can't get away now. Oh. How can we get married without a best man? We'll be back in an hour. We're serving sandwiches on the way back. The big brass from the Pentagon are in with the boss right now. Where are the figures, Dave? Well, here they are. You'll have to explain them yourself. Joan hasn't had a chance to make up a report yet. They're just out of the computer. And we're getting out of here right now. Good luck, kids. Thanks, Joe. Oh, by the way, the third stage of Joe was completed this morning. I don't like the way Joe looks. Doesn't he ever sleep? He's working too hard. Maybe when his child is born, he'll take a vacation. Come, let's hurry. <laughs> Command to fire missiles is halted. Computer's top urgency report indicates object not from any American base. But its origin is still unknown. The wild missile boils across the Bering Sea toward the North American continent. Continental Air Defense Command, called CONAD. This is the center of the security and defense of the United States against attack from air or space. The eyes of American continental defense are radar eyes. They search for a thousand miles or more from Texas towers anchored far out in the Atlantic, from radar planes on Pacific patrol, from picket ships on continuous duty. The farthest outposts of CONAD's watching eyes are the North Canada radar stations called Dew Line, distant early warning line. It's cold as ever outside. How's it going? Oh, it's quiet. Hey, what the heck is this? Scandinavian Airlines Flight 576, isn't it? That's Flight 576. He's 90 degrees off course. I better call the patrol plane and check. This is Keyhole Advance to Spyglass 7. Come in, Spyglass 7. Spyglass 7 to Keyhole Advance. Come in. You've got a UFO at 90 degrees west on your course. Investigate. This is no Scandinavian Airlines flight. What do you mean? This thing's traveling at 4,000 miles an hour. Four thousand. Call Spyglass Seven. Have him get on his television camera. Keyhole advance to Spyglass Seven. Transmit UFO on your television camera. Over. This is Spyglass Seven. Transmitter ready. Get the still camera. Conab wants some pictures of this. I'm online with a TV camera. The sky is getting bright. He has it on interception course. Get that picture. Now. Come in, Spyglass 7. Come in. Conrad and hurry. Yes, sir. Red ball to Conrad. UFO 400 miles from due line. Keyhole advance. Latitude 64 degrees, 22 minutes. Longitude 148 degrees and 15 minutes. Altitude less than five miles. Speed over 4,000 miles per hour. Repeat, over 4,000 miles per hour. Picture will be transmitted to you immediately. 
It's only six minutes from here. We can have it sized down for you in less than two hours. David, do you like it? Very nice. There's one other here that I like. Honey, for Pete's sake, just get one that fits. It isn't very important. It isn't very important. Sweetheart. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. David, I just don't seem to understand you. What's so important at the lab that we can't take a few extra minutes and go to another store and find a ring that fits? There's really nothing as important to you as your work, is there? Believe me, you are as important to me as my work. David, you win. We're not getting married today. All right, if you say so, but we've also got to get back to work. Don't you even care? Of course I care. And you're also a scientist. Yes, and I'm a woman. Well, you're misinterpreting everything I say. Well, am I? We decide to miss lunch and get married, fine. But all you can think about is a hydrogen warhead. Well, I'm sick of it. I guess I was expecting you to insist to drag me off to the church, not back to the lab. Well, marry your hydrogen warhead. But I'm quitting my job, David. You'll have to find somebody else for both marriages. I'll take the ring. She seemed a little upset. <laughs> yeah, she sure was. At Conad, reports from Juline take precedence over all else. So there's a confirmed report of a UFO with the characteristics of a missile. Check the Canadian defense officer. Give me the Canadian defense officer. We have a confirmed report of a UFO with the characteristics of a guided missile. Royal Canadian Air Force jets are ordered into the sky to intercept. have not intercepted rockets since the defense of London in World War II. The missile is only five miles up, but these flyers do not know of its million degree heat. Any more figures? Yes, sir. Speed 4078 miles per hour, altitude 24,200, vector unchanged. What is on its way, sir? The UFO is definitely a missile. Photo's on its way. That's about all. I hope you can stop it. I figure we've got about two minutes left. Put me through the keyhole advance. Sponsor. Thank God there was a keyhole advance. Predicted course over Great Slave Lake, west shore of Hudson Bay, pass to Ottawa. Latitude 38 degrees, longitude 75 degrees. Directly over metropolitan New York. Conat to the Pentagon. The Joint Chiefs of Staff are called to an emergency meeting. The first responsibility of these men is 175 million American lives. They have a second responsibility, to advise the president in the event of war. 
Pentagon puts all American forces on yellow alert and get ready for red alert. Dave? Dave? Hello, Joe. Hotline just opened to the Pentagon. Red hot, situation yellow. Anybody know why? Why? Whoever knows why or what. Your section is to keep an open line to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, there are about ten sections at the lab on that open line. What's wrong? Joan? Oh, I forgot. Congratulations. Where is the bride? She decided I was in love with a hydrogen warhead, not a woman. No wedding, no lunch. Well, doesn't she understand? Doesn't she know we're in a boat headed for Niagara Falls and you're trying to stop us? She knows. But she doesn't want to believe. Who does? Joe, what happened? The Honeymoon Express got derailed, Joe. I heard. Practice drill again? Maybe not. That's the alert to drown the atomic pile. Must be practice drill. I've got to get to my station. Joan, let me say something about David. It's the job. It gets all of us. We have no other life. Maybe we want no other life. I don't know. Oh, look at me. My wife is having a baby. It's due today. I should be at her side. I think they can't do without me here for a day. Well, can't they? Crazy. I don't know anymore whether I should be with my wife or my job. Go home, Joe. Ella needs you. Listen to that bell. And I don't think it's practice. Joe's never seen this bed jacket. I wouldn't wear it until after we. Where is Joe? He should be here by now. Oh, don't worry about Joe, Mama. He's always on time. He'll be here. Drive me to the hospital and... Oh, darling. Five minutes apart. I just hope he isn't held up in traffic. I'll call Havenbrook and see what time he left. I'm afraid there aren't many minutes left. War? I don't know. We're alerted to dry on the atomic pile on two minutes' notice, and I've got to disassemble the Joe warhead. There are two things at Havenbrook that could wipe out ten square miles of New York. The atomic pile and the warhead for this missile. It's a safety precaution. Safety precaution? Against what? Against being hit by something. I'm going to the warhead room. Please stay by the phone. David. I'm sorry I behaved the way I did. I don't know how much time there is, and I can't even phone her. Well, Joe, you've got to get to her. She's waiting for me to bring the car to take her to the hospital. She doesn't trust anyone else to take her. And the place is frozen. Who would have thought a thing like this could happen on a day like this? Nothing comes in or goes out of Havenbrook. And no phone calls. Let me try. This is priority call, Joan Woods, X27 section. David Lawrence's assistant. I tried that. The generals called me Mr. Freed, but I couldn't get through. Dr. Freed's wife is due to have her baby today. She's waiting for her husband. Anne? Anne, look, I know it's a violation, but, well, Dr. Freed's wife is due to have her baby today. I explained that. It didn't do any good. Joe? Good girl. Okay. Ella? Uh -huh. Oh, Ella? Oh, darling, please hurry. Tell your mother. Ella. Ella, can you hear me? Joe. Joe. I was talking to. Hello. Yeah, this is Joe Freed. Yes, sir. Mother, we were cut off. I thought you'd be with Ella. 
building's frozen. I got a rush call to get over here. What is it? I don't know. I was called from the hot lab. Something big. Gentlemen, these are seconds of utter urgency. This is Scrambler Circuit Sage, an object now over Canada headed for New York. This photograph was taken five minutes ago. Speed, 4,200 miles an hour. Altitude, slightly under five miles. Why, it would burn up. It has. Looks like atomic or hydrogen drive. We believe it to be hydrogen. That would make a temperature of over one million degrees. That's impossible. A high order magnetic field can't be projected from such a missile without any damage to itself from the heat. At this moment, groups in every rocket and atomic installation are looking at this picture. Out of this combined knowledge, we recommend to the president our uh, our guess. Well, our information is that the Soviet designs are highly different. I've never seen this direction of design before. It's nothing like ours. Any contradictions? No. <laughs> Mr. President. The Havenbrook staff cannot identify design. You men will be evacuated at once. We cannot afford to lose you. This rocket will pass over New York in 63 minutes. Destroying it. War today means two things. Immediate defense, immediate retaliation. A war may last only an hour. In that hour, 30 million people could be killed. SAC, the Strategic Air Command. The world's mightiest aircraft, based in England, Spain, North Africa, Greenland, and the United States. Seven minutes since the first flash from Conad. After Pearl Harbor, it took us months to get ready for war. Against attack by missiles, we have only minutes. There may be no tomorrow. There may be no this afternoon. Eight minutes now since the first alarm. Hundreds of radar stations around the curve of the Earth are searching for additional flying objects. Contact is being made with all foreign powers to identify the source of the wild missile. State's press conference for today has been canceled. Oh, no, no, no questions, please. I'm terribly sorry. Thank you very much for coming, but no questions. John, I said no questions, Young. In 15 minutes, I go on the network. 30 million people watch me. What do I tell them? No comment. 
I have requested the President to wait 15 minutes until replies from the other nations have been received. Any report on additional missiles? No, Mr. Secretary. Any report from CIA on sudden military activity on the part of uh, European or Asian nations? No, Mr. Secretary. A missile over Alaska. And I must give the President the recommendation of the State Department on immediate retaliatory action. What's the danger? What? That's what I want to know. I said no comment. I'm going to tell the whole country that 10 million people are going to die. If you use one word of what you just said, just one word, I can promise you won't stay in Washington. These are from London and Peiping, sir, received four minutes ago. We're still decoding Paris and Tokyo. You should have them in three minutes. Well, the foreign ministries deny any hostile action. All of them disclaim knowledge of the UFO now over Canada. What about Russia? Scrambler, sir, to the ambassador at Moscow. Yes? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, sir. Yes, Mr. President. I'm waiting to hear from our ambassador in Moscow, Mr. President. I shall inform our ambassador, Mr. President. The Premier of the Soviet Union has just phoned the President. Origin of the giant missile is unknown. Sir, are you all right? I was just praying, praying that these are honest men. These Canadian jets are moving at 1,200 miles per hour. Go ahead, Mr. Wynn. This is the leader. Capital of Canada. 200,000 people go about their everyday business. Her parliament is in session, her children in school. Ottawa is under a yellow alert. Federal Civil Defense, Washington, D.C. Warning is sent out to Eastern Seaport Civil Defense Agencies. Prepare for total disaster. Seaboard is on warning yellow. New York is notified. Plan A of civil defense set in motion. Air raid wardens are alerted. Traffic goes under control. Hospitals prepare. The evacuation of the city begins. Joe, what are you doing home? There isn't much time. Fill the bathtub, the sink, and every pot you've got with water. And if you hear a siren, turn the current to the house off the main switch. Yeah, Millie. Well, I don't know what it's all about, but maybe we'd better hurry over to the supermarket. Goodbye, Millie. And keep off of the phone. No calls, no loading up at the supermarket. Stay in the house and keep the radio going. Yes, Jimmy. Why'd you have to call me? You know I always sleep. stops all commercial and private air activity. LaGuardia Tower to all aircraft. All incoming flights are rerouted to Philadelphia. LaGuardia Tower to all aircraft. All flights are temporarily canceled. 
All flights are temporarily canceled. Civil defense measures take priority all over the city. These men started an ordinary day's work. They are no longer employees of the wrecking company. They are soldiers and officers of civil defense. Theirs is the most important job of any right now. Red Cross blood banks have been notified that areas surrounding New York City will need an estimated four million pints of blood. There's the big bandit. I've never seen anything like it on the scope before. This is Green Line. A UFO looking like the lost missile has appeared on the radar scope at the station. Canadian jets are within 250 miles of interception. Don't forget to take these, darling. Number three car is ready, sir. But there's no priority for Miss Wood. Then there's no priority for me. Come ahead, Dr. Loring. I'm staying. David, even Joe Freed on the day his baby may be born has no choice. Joe Freed's baby. Joe. Joe's not ready. Except for the warhead, Joe is ready. That would take 10 days. We've got less than enough. I can put it together in 20 minutes and get to the base in 20 more. David, get in your car. Sir, I can use a baby warhead. A baby warhead? Use just the trigger atomic fuse. Sir, it's the only missile we've got that can get through that heat fast enough and at least have a chance with an atomic explosion. David, there is a chance. Take these. I'm staying here. You're right. Joe can search it out with his own guiding device at 5,000 miles an hour. Canadian jets are two minutes from interception. Ninety seconds to interception. They are thirty miles apart. Continues on previous vector. What do the computers say? Predicted course is vector. Show it on the map, please. On the map. It is followed its course across northern Canada, past Great Slave Lake, the Coppermine River, along the southern shore of Hudson's Bay. Its course lies directly through Ottawa, the Adirondacks, and into New York City. All I can give you, David, is command support. Let's go, we can go by. I found this man trying to hack it. He belongs in car number five. I won't be any good anymore anyway, General. My wife's having a baby today. All right, guard, pass this man outside. I'll start the countdown and clear you through. Yes, sir. Take 
shelter. All persons will proceed to evacuation areas wherever possible. Take shelter. I repeat, take shelter. Obey your civil defense warning. Obey your civil defense warning. Ottawa is on a red alert. <laughs> Of now, I'm putting the East Coast on red alert. Issue the orders. Air Force Command. As soon as possible, advise. Red alert. Scramble interceptors for attack on enemy missile. Instruct pilots, stay a minimum of five miles distance. Utilize full firepower. Sage is notified. From here go the orders to the fighter squadrons that will take to the air against the missile from hell. This city is in the path of a runaway missile. In two minutes, the governor of the state will be on every TV and radio station to declare martial law. You men know what to do in Situation Red. This is Situation Red. been conditioned by practice alerts. They know what to do. Turn off your electricity and gas. Fill pots and pans with water. Obey your civil defense wardens. This is Colonel Rand. Stay tuned to this station. I'm Bill Bradley. Yes, I know who you are. Is the report true, Governor? Yes, the missile will be over Ottawa in 51 minutes. Over New York, six minutes later. Can we intercept it? Two flights of Canadian rocket fighters have already been burned out of the air. If everything else fails, I, I don't know. 
How can we evacuate 10 million people? Well, I don't know, but we can at least try to get the children out. Are you going to declare martial law? I must, and right now. That when my cousin says go, 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 she really means no, no. Excuse me. I've just been informed that we're about to switch to a special bulletin. Please, keep this in mind. So long as you have your faith, you'll be alive and well. So keep your faith. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of your state. Please, listen carefully. To ensure your safety, I have declared martial law. Now, there is no war, nor any danger of war. There is, however, some danger from a flying object which may approach New York City. You will obey all police, civil defense orders for your own safety. As an additional precautionary measure, children will be taken from schools to protected areas. I got orders to get over here as quick as I could. Irving! I got to be back by four to watch TV. We'll talk about it later. Gary! Gary! Mom. Oh, God. I won't let them take you away. Now, don't cry, darling. Don't cry. Please let Jerry come with us. No. No, I'm afraid I'll never see him again. Please, don't scare the children. I'll let him come along. This is a ball. We're going out to the country. Buses like this one are picking up school children all over the city. Each driver prays that someone is doing the same for his children. Laboratory, David Loring is preparing the baby warhead. These metal fingers reach for the man-made element, plutonium. Its radiation is the deadliest known. This warhead will be equal in destructive power to 100,000 tons of TNT. Not so fast, Ella. Be careful, darling. Mrs. Freed, we thought you had gone to the hospital already. Her husband was supposed to come. What happened with the husband, Mrs. Freed? On such a day, forgive me for saying, but nothing can happen. What 
does it matter when he gets here? How do we know we'll be here to greet him? Harold, you shouldn't be so pessimistic. Pessimistic? I'm being optimistic. I believe this whole pile of bricks is going to be wiped out. That's the only optimistic thought I've had since I got this job. Did you hear anything new? The last bulletin only repeated, get off the streets and go to a shelter. Oh, my radio, I forgot. Yeah. No. We'll be snug as a bug in a rug here. Why do we have to be snug as a bug here in the basement? Mama. <laughs> Mama, the pain. What's the matter with the lady, Mama? She's going to have a baby. You mean here right now? I... I think so, darling. You stay here, and I'll go and see if I can help. Dave! I had to come back. It's all right, sir. Keep going. I'll catch up with you. It's all right, Joe. The warhead is ready. Can't use it. What's the matter? I know where that thing came from. It's more important than my wife and baby. It's more important than the whole city. What do you mean you know where it came from? It's not a missile. You saw the picture of Finn's hydrogen-powered intercontinental missile. Not intercontinental, Dave. Interplanetary. A lost missile. That's not impossible, Joe. But right now, we've got to destroy it before it destroys us. You, you can't destroy it. It may have people in it. It's from another planet. We could make contact with them, talk to them. Think how important that would be to science. How important it would be to us. I know how important it is to us right now. I've got to stop you, Dave. I've got to stop you. This is Joe Base. The countdown is 30 minutes to zero. Now. line of defense. Nike missiles around New York are raised into firing position. The computer could be wrong about the missile hitting New York. This is one fact you've got to face. You've got to believe it. Millions of people, David. I can't. It's too terrible. It's hard to know that maybe you're going to die within the hour. Hard to understand. It's got to be faced without panic, possibly with some hope. It would have been better not to tell them. Much, much kinder. Let them go on just enjoying a beautiful morning in New York, and at least they'd never know what hit them. Could Joe be right, a lost spaceship? Certainly not impossible. No nation on Earth would fire such a missile. It would have to be a nation of homicidal maniacs. We built Joe with a hydrogen warhead that can rip 500 square miles out of the Earth. The job Joe was built to do, it will do today. Our wedding day. Joe will reach maximum velocity one minute after firing, and the shell will begin to burn. Contact with the lost missile somewhere over Lake Champlain. I hope. This is Joe Base. Countdown is 25 minutes to zero. Now. <laughs>
one, negative. Phase two. The missile continues on its way to Ottawa. Counter-attack by Hunter-type missile. Two, one, zero. Negative. Course and speed unchanged. Thirty children to safety, and I don't even know what's happening to my own. Sydney, leave Sandra alone. Miss Kelso, I'm holding up my hand. When you think it's safe to stop. Safe? Who knows where it's safe? I don't even know what's going on, except New York has had it. There must be at least two million children in New York. I wonder how many will get out alive. Uh, everything we've passed has been loaded with children. It's martial law. No car is leaving Manhattan unless it's carrying children. I must have planned it that way. Oh, please let Joe do its job. Wow, look at the jeep go. Wow, hot rod jeeps. That one had a big box in it. Probably treasure. Wow, look at that sports car go. <laughs> Maniac. There are no children in that car. I thought only cars was children. That's why he's burning up the road. Selfish, crazy coward. Look at him go. Now we'll give him a face. An eye, des yeux, whoop, un nez, une bouche. <laughs> and now he can smoke. No man can smoke. Oh, yes, he can. Look. Look, Papa, look. Shark, what is it? I don't know. She's all right, Joe. A boy, Joe. Our little boy. To give a child minutes of life. Mr. Freed, do you know? A spaceship. A 
lost spaceship. Can we stop it? Can you stop the heat from the sun? Can you stop the tide? Or life? The monster will not fall. It will go on and on until the entire planet of Earth is burned off like an apple being peeled. It will be over Great Britain on its 14th revolution. That means in three days, London will be in ashes. Stockholm, one day. Paris, one day. Rome, two days. Moscow, four days. The wild missile is now 400 miles from Ottawa. Give me Conan. Sir, that was Ottawa. In seven minutes, El Paso with the city. New York City, seven minutes later. People have been sent to shelters. their shelter in God. This junk is through. Yeah, well, I ain't about to try walks, Bill. We take whatever comes along. David, be careful. I've got to go as fast as I can. Let's sing him back. It's built to take shock. Enough plutonium to blow up all of New York. We're about four miles from the missile base. A jeep, no less. Come on. radiation. The lead shield of the box has been opened. Stop! Stop! Please, stop! Please give us a lift. It's urgent. I'm from Havenbrook Atomic Research. Our car was stolen. Always room for a couple of more. Thank you very much. This is Joe Face. The countdown is eight minutes to zero. There's the jeep. Stop the car. They've opened the box. David. Don't go near there. There's radioactive material. David, what are you What's doing? What's your idea? David. Loring protects his eyes, but he has condemned himself to death. Stay away! Get back! David! David, please! David! knows what plutonium radiation means. David Loring will die in minutes. Ottawa waits, a city ready to die.
nothing more can be done. Some may live only to remember for the rest of their lives the most horrible moments of destruction man has ever known. of steam, molten lava, twisted girders, desolation. New York has five minutes. Hello, hero. I figured you'd stay. Gotta keep the juice going, huh, Max? Most of the guys are staying for the finish. This is Joe Bass. The countdown is four minutes to zero. Now. Dr. Loring is through the gate. This is Joe Face. The countdown is three minutes to zero. Now.